Today we have some incredibly exciting results. I can't wait to hear the discoveries. And so with that, I'd like to introduce John Grotzinger. John is the project scientist of Curiosity, uh, and uh, he's from Caltech in Pasadena. John, please introduce your team. Uh, today we're going to be hearing results uh, from our mission colleagues, Chris Webster, Sushil Atreya, and Roger Summons. And what we're going to be reporting on is something that we've been hard at work on for the better part of two years, ever since we landed, analyzing the atmosphere of Mars and the, and the ancient rocks at Gale Crater. And, and what we'd like to share with you today, that we now have uh, full confidence that there is methane occasionally present in the atmosphere of Mars, and that there are organics preserved in ancient rocks on Mars in certain places. This is important. Uh, methane in the atmosphere and organics in ancient rocks are important because they are chemically reduced molecules. On terrestrial planets, they compete for destruction with other kinds of molecules that are more oxidizing. And their preservation and occurrence is, is a matter, a certain matter of luck, for which science must provide a search paradigm in order to better understand how these materials are produced and where they go. But most importantly, they can both be consistent with the former presence of life, or the existing presence of life. So that we detect methane in the atmosphere on Mars is not an argument that we have found evidence of life on Mars, but it is one of the few hypotheses that we can propose that we must consider as we go forward in the future. And organics, large organic molecules present in ancient rocks on Mars is also not an argument that there was once life on ancient Mars, but it is the kind of material that you would look for if life ever originated on Mars. So organics of any, time, any kind, even abiotic organics, abiotically produced organics, are the kinds of things we need to look for if we are ever going to find evidence that microbes once existed on Mars. So this is really exciting news for us. We have publications that are coming out today in Science Magazine on the methane that Chris and Sushil will be discussing. And, and then later on, we have a paper that's been reviewed and is now in revision by Caroline Fresenet of the SAM team that talks about the organics and all the measurements that you'll see today that Roger Summons will discuss. These are hard won. Uh, it took a long time to understand where to drill rocks and where to go. And what many people didn't know is that even while we were undergoing the large, long trek from Yellowknife Bay to Mount Sharp, we were analyzing these samples continuously over and over and over again, running blanks and standards, going back to the material, analyzing it different ways. The important thing is, is that Curiosity is a laboratory, and we've been using it that way. And that's why it takes a long time to get to a conclusion like this. And we also had to then arrive at Mount Sharp and drill a rock there in order to make sure that we weren't finding exactly the same thing that we had seen before and we didn't. And that's the reason that we can now pronounce this to be a discovery. Okay, so let me turn it over now to Chris to begin the discussion of the methane results. Thank you, John. Well, good morning, everybody. Uh, we're here today to report to the first in situ detection of methane on Mars in the Martian atmosphere. And we've done that in two distinct uh, regions or two regimes. At, first of all, at a low background level of about 0.7 parts per billion, and then at a transient higher level that's 10 times uh, the background values. The measurements were being published today in Science, as you've heard. They were made using the tunable laser spectrometer, which is one of the instruments that make up the SAM suite. And the uh, SAM PI is sitting here on the right edge in the blue shirt, Dr. Paul Mahaffey. The measurements that we're reporting span a 20-month period. And this builds upon our earlier published result where we announced a low upper limit of 1.3 parts per billion from the first eight months only. So if we go to uh, the first graphic oh, here, this is uh, how the measurement is made. The lasers, the, the, an infrared semiconductor laser, the light comes in from the right, and it multipasses 81 times between two mirrors before it hits a detector. 
And so we have a very simple sequence here of, um, uh, to look for the methane. We do that because the infrared laser, as you scan it, it looks at three distinct lines that can only be methane. These are, a very, these are a fingerprint of methane in the infrared region, so we're very confident of our uh, uh, detection and observations. We've developed a sequence. It's the same sequence in every run. It's an empty cell sequence, full cell with Martian air, then an empty cell. And so we, we then take the difference of the full cell uh, minus the empty cell readings. So uh, we've developed that very simple uh, protocol there. So for the, for the um, and we also analyze the data with the same uh, web-based analysis tool when we get the spectra back on Earth. For the background levels of methane, we were fortunate to, to be part of the SAM suite because we took advantage of a, a, a capability for doing methane enrichment. So as the air is, as the Martian atmosphere is slowly ingested, we pass it over a scrubber that scrubs out a lot of the CO2, which is the main component in the atmosphere. This effectively, it takes us longer to fill the cell, but it effectively enriches the methane content in that cell. That gives us a much better signal to noise or a better precision. So from two such runs, and by the way, that's a photograph of the TLS instrument at the bottom. It weighs about three kilograms. It's about this size, uh, for those of you who would like to know. And these are the results that, we're, uh, that we've published today. And uh, you can see the two enrichment runs on the right. They, there are error bars on those, if you look carefully. And the result from those two, we determined the background level to be 0.7 plus or minus 0.2. That's 95% confidence. This is an agreement with our earlier lower precision runs. And uh, however, though, those, those va the value we get is significantly lower than the model predictions for the, what the background level should be. So uh, things were, we were repeating to make these low measurements, as you can see from the left. And then last November, on thanks, around about the Thanksgiving holiday, we were completely surprised. We suddenly saw five and a half parts per billion methane. Um, it was an oh my gosh moment. So we repeated the measurement a week later. We saw seven parts per billion. And then a month later, and again, we saw seven parts per billion. And then uh, our PI, Paul Mahaffey, insisted we do it a fourth time. Three weeks later, we saw nine parts per billion. And the average of those four sequential measurements is the 7.2 plus minus two parts per billion that we're reporting for the high methane period. This period lasted two months, remember. <clears throat> Six weeks later, we looked again, and it had completely disappeared. We were back at background levels, as you can see with the first enrichment run. We repeated that three and a half months later, and this time we, we did a simultaneous regular run to validate uh, the two uh, different methods. And you see they agree very well. They're both actually recorded on the same day. So here we had witnessed an unexpected episodic increase in the Mars methane. <clears throat> 